Modern trucks run cleaner than ever, but it didn't happen by accident. Welcome to the AdBlue module. In this training, we'll uncover how diesel engines meet strict Euro standards, what role SCR systems and AdBlue fluid play, and how to properly diagnose the most common and costly faults. Whether you're new to diagnostics or refining your skills, this is where clean emissions meet real-world workshop logic. All internal combustion engines, especially diesel ones, emit toxic exhaust gases. In the early days, when research was weak and nobody cared much about penguins or polar bears, trucks didn't have any exhaust gas neutralization systems. Later, during the Euro 4 phase, and for some brands even Euro 3, EGR became mandatory to reduce emissions by reintroducing part of the exhaust gases back into the intake. But it wasn't enough. The results were still too weak to meet environmental targets. By the time Euro 5 arrived, AdBlue became unavoidable, and it's still with us today on every truck you touch. AdBlue is a mix of urea and demineralized water, with a strict concentration of 32.5% urea. Not more, not less. Get it wrong, and the system starts to fail. If it's too diluted, doesn't neutralize NOx properly. If it's too concentrated, starts crystallizing. Simple experiment. Pour a few drops of AdBlue on a metal surface. After a few hours, the water evaporates and leaves behind tiny crystals. This is the same thing that happens inside real truck systems. AdBlue crystallizes. Remember that. It's key to diagnosing most faults in these systems. So what does AdBlue actually do? By injecting it into the exhaust stream at the right temperature, we neutralize nitrogen oxides, NOx, toxic compounds that contribute to acid rain, smog, and health problems. In workshop slang, we just call it NOx because the X stands for multiple possible nitric oxides, NO, NO2, etc. When NOx reacts with AdBlue inside the exhaust, it turns into harmless nitrogen and water vapor. The AdBlue tank stores the fluid on board. You can usually spot it by the blue cap. Don't confuse it with the windshield washer. Unlike diesel, AdBlue is extremely temperature sensitive. Below plus 5 degrees Celsius, there is a risk of freezing. When it's too hot, it degrades. That's why all modern AdBlue systems include heating circuits. In most trucks, this is done using the engine coolant routed through a heating loop inside the AdBlue tank. What to check when diagnosing? Is coolant actually reaching the tank? Is the valve stuck? Does the tank temperature go up at idle? If in doubt, test the heating valve manually. Use a multimeter to check internal resistance or diagnostic tool to check for control. You can even supply 24 volts from a battery through a fuse to test it manually. Depending on the truck brand and generation, you'll encounter two main types of AdBlue supply modules. First, pump with integrated ECU. One big unit with pump plus electronics inside. It handles pressure, metering, logic, diagnostics. Second, separate pump plus ECU. Pump does only the physical work. Logic is handled by a separate control unit. For example, MAN uses ASM, Volvo uses ACM. In both cases, the pump's job is simple. Draw AdBlue from the tank, build pressure, send it to the injector at the right time. The logic that decides when how much to inject may come from the engine ECU, a dedicated after-treatment module, or both. The AdBlue injector receives a signal from the AdBlue module or engine control unit, and only then it opens to spray. This ensures that AdBlue is injected only when all conditions are correct. Right temperature, pressure, and system readiness. There are injectors that are purely mechanical and also electrical ones with temperature and pressure sensors, depending on the system. Spray quality matters a lot. If the nozzle is dirty or partially blocked, it may dribble instead of spraying, which leads to crystallization and poor NOx reduction.
there are typically two to four exhaust temperature sensors in the system. Their job is to measure exhaust gas temperature at key points before and after add blue injection. Rule of thumb, add blue injection usually doesn't begin until the temperature at the silencer reaches at least 150 to 200 degrees. Injecting too early means wasted act blue and increased risk of crystallization. Temperature sensors rarely fail, but if they do, you will probably see it very quickly in the monitoring section with your diagnostics tool. NOx sensors are the brains of the emission system. You'll find one before the SCR, upstream, one after the SCR, downstream. The upstream NOx sensor tells the system how much NOx is present before treatment. The ECU uses this data to calculate the needed add blue dose. The downstream sensor measures how effective the SCR and injection process are. But if the second NOx sensor fails and reads too high, the system panics. It injects more and more AdBlue, trying to fix what it thinks is a problem. This floods the SCR with AdBlue, leading to massive crystallization. Even after replacing a faulty NOx sensor, false readings can continue because smoldering AdBlue deposits inside the SCR give off false NOx signals. In this case, the only solution is to open the silencer, clean it thoroughly, and inspect the SCR using a borescope. Avoid washing the SCR unless absolutely necessary. It's a last resort, not a standard solution. Early AdBlue systems use large modules that mixed AdBlue with compressed air from the truck's air system. These systems used a pump to build pressure, a mixing chamber with compressed air, long lines to deliver the mix to the exhaust. Problem? Every point where air met AdBlue was a crystallization hotspot. Spray was decent when it worked, but air introduced extra variables. Air was used because early pumps could only reach about 4.5 bar, not enough to atavize AdBlue effectively on its own. So air was used to simulate a nozzle-like spray pattern. Dribble equals crystals. Next generation systems drop the air and added stronger punts, namely 10 bar. This gave better injection quality and reduced complexity. But these systems had issues too. High pressure plus heat near the injector is risk of stuck open injectors. Faulty filter changes, internal leaks, slow crystal buildup in supply module. These systems usually separate the pump and control unit. For example, ACM from Volvo. The result is a more compact and modular design. Most systems come from third-party manufacturers like Bosch, Denoxtronic, or Emitech, Cummins, not the truck OEMs. Key signs, Bosch, found in MAN, Mercedes, etc. Emitech, found in MAN, DAF, etc. Don't waste time guessing. Look at the pump, injector, or if it uses air. Then you'll know whether you're working on an air-assisted or high-pressure system. End goal is always the same. Inject the right amount of AdBlue at the right time with proper spray. Crystallization is one of the most common and costly add blue issues. It can occur on the pump due to leaks or poor filter changes, on the injector, especially if it's dribbling, inside the exhaust, worst case scenario, on the pump, a leak from a poorly seated filter or failed seal can allow add blue to leak and crystallize. On older Bosch Denoxtronic units, internal sensor seals sometimes failed, flooding the control unit with add blue causing electrical shorts and corrosion. Only fix, full replacement. In the exhaust, crystallization happens when a leaking injector slowly drimps under pressure. Over time, you might find half a kilogram of AdBlue salt inside the silencer. Always inspect the SCR face with a borescope. If you see crystals on the mesh, cleaning is mandatory.
High pressure pumps are more prone to failure due to the stress they handle. During pressure buildup tests, always compare set point pressure versus actual pressure. Common mistake, replacing the pump when the real problem is a leak in the pickup line inside the tank. If there's a tiny hole in the intake pipe, the system may work fine with a full tank, but draw air when half empty. Test it properly by running the system from a clean bucket with short hoses. Also remember, if the system doesn't reach pressure after a short period, it will shut down to avoid damaging the motor. This applies to both new and old systems. Air-assisted pumps can fail too, usually due to motor failure. Always listen to the motor and feel it during the test. A major diagnostic mistake is testing injection quantity by disconnecting the ad blue pipe from the injector and catching the flow directly. That only tests the pump, not the injector. Always test with the injector connected and spraying into a measuring cup. Then inspect the exhaust silencer entry with a bar scope. If crystals are visible, clean them out. In high pressure systems, injectors can fail open or closed. Closed is fine, no injection. Open is continuous leak crystallization. More subtle, uneven spray pattern. Some injectors have six holes. If one or two spray poorly, replace the injector. Don't wait for full failure. Uneven spray already affects SER performance. NOx sensors are crucial for system logic, especially the upstream one before SCR. If the engine burns oil, upstream NOx values spike, and the ECU floods the exhaust with AdBlue trying to compensate. That leads to crystallization and silencer damage. Downstream NOx sensors are easier to test. Best practice, run a test drive with one person watching live data. Sensors activate at 200 to 250 degrees Celsius. Upstream should stabilize first. Downstream should be a hundred times lower. Look for signs like NOx values jumping from 50 to 1000 back to 50 ppm equals likely bad sensor. NOx values matching engine torque smoothly, likely real issue. Always check add blue pressure, injection quantity, NOx before, NOx after. Changing the sensor without cleaning the SCR if there are add blue in the silencer, client will come back. The sensor will still see false NOx values from leftover burning crystals. Clean it first or risk a repeat visit. When dealing with any add blue related fault, the best practice is to use all available diagnostic tests, not just the one that seems related. This allows you to fix the root cause and prevent future failures. Start with pressure buildup test. Check set point versus actual pressure. Listen to pump sound and feel vibration. Injection quantity test. Catch spray in a measuring cup. Too little is pump or suction issue. Too much is leaking injector or pump doesn't regulate properly. For high pressure systems, do a proper injector leak test and check spray pattern. Knowing how the system works makes troubleshooting fast and accurate. Quantity tests give clear visual proof of what's going on. Older systems, especially air-assisted, can be flushed. Crystallization inside pump chamber or lines can often be cleared with hot water. To do it, disconnect in and return lines to connect both lines into a clean bucket of hot water. Run pressure buildup or injection test. 4. Let the system circulate water and flush itself. This won't fix everything but it can bring a clogged system back to life or at least help you pinpoint what needs replacing. In older systems, a fixed emissions fault code would often remain even after the issue was resolved. This was done on purpose for inspections, like TUV, so authorities could verify a past fault. Originally, there was no power limitation with emission faults. Later regulations made it mandatory. First, reduce engine power to 70%, if ignored, enter creep mode, 3 km per hour max. To exit creep mode, use diagnostic tool and perform reset ritual. Sometimes it's just a few clicks.
Some brands require a test drive to verify all parameters are back in range. Once satisfied, the ECU clears the code and returns to normal. Identify system type, air assisted or high pressure. Run pressure buildup and quantity tests. Visually inspect injector spray. Use borescope to check silencer and SCR face if needed. Confirm heating and temperature sensor function. Always do a post repair test drive to verify knocks before after. Graded measuring cup. Handheld AdBlue concentration tester. Diagnostic tool with injector control and pressure tests. Borescope. Multimeter plus jumper wire for valve line testing. Never trust quantity without checking spray. Don't ignore Knox logic. Watch before and after SCR. Always confirm pressure and temperature before injection test. Dirty injectors, crystal injector, crystal exhaust. When in doubt, isolate parts of the system using a logic. Congratulations, you've completed the AdBlue module. Want more Electrob content? Subscribe to be notified of the next modules covering EGR and DPF diagnostics, EBS systems overview, CAN bus testing, brand specific quirks, Volvo, MAN, Scania, and much more. See you next time in the Electrob Education Lab. Electrob, the core spit bridges the gap between theory and reality. So you don't just learn diagnostics, you master it.